Hi everyone, let's talk about Escape Plan, which again is on Kickstarter for another week or so, and you can click the link in the description to go to the campaign page and see all of the final stuff and all the stretch goals they've unlocked and things. Yeah, uh, and speaking of stretch goals, if anyone's wondering about the solo mode, the components and rules aren't quite uh, finalized for that yet, so I haven't been able to make a video with the prototype, but if not sooner, I'll definitely be making one when the final game comes out, as I have with a lot of uh, VTOLs games. So, what do I think about it? Well, I absolutely love it, and I can say that about every one of his games that I've played, so you could say that I was predisposed to like it anyway, but yeah, I think this is quite different to his other games for a start, and yeah, as with all of them, it's really, really tied to the theme. It's a very interesting theme, a quite a unique theme, at least amongst games that I tend to play. I, you know, tend to play these economic games, or trading in the Mediterranean, or however you want to put it uh, yeah it's it's definitely an enticing one to be playing out a you know the aftermath of a heist and as with all of his games you know a lot of the stuff that can be found in the game is just directly tied to the theme that you're playing with so it makes it easier to teach the game and remember you know how the game works when you you know as soon as you start the rules explanation when you are saying that okay we we just robbed a bank or something and now we are trying to plan our escape and you know there's SWAT teams here we've stashed the money in various businesses we can go to these storage lockers and try and get bags of money everything is just yeah it's it's it could be more exciting if you were, you know, if you were dismissive of working in a car factory or making wine or things in his previous games. Then how could you ignore a big, uh, a big escape after a bank heist? Uh, so yeah, it's got that going for it, and everything that you are doing is really, really tied to the theme itself. From you know, yeah, getting the money that's stashed away in those lockers or in the businesses to hiring gang members to distract the police for you or to uh, let you slip away unnoticed by lowering your notoriety or you know hiring you a helicopter to getting you across the city it just all works beautifully i you know, <laughs> just keep going on about things that i really really like about it the the map building for a start is a really really strong part that you are trying to build things to your advantage but you are also you know maybe giving people that are going before you a chance to go to a really good place and you, know, you want to complete sets of going to the businesses or going to the storehouses, but the way that this map comes out is a huge influence on the way that the game goes. So I've played this, uh, I've played this three proper times now. I've played it at five players and two two-player games. And in the first game that we played, none of the sets could be finished at all until the third day. And the third day is quite different because although you say this is a game with three rounds, the third round, you might not really be there for. The The only thing you might be able to do in the third round is just, you know, I've, I've got no money, so I need to just work out how I'm even going to get to this exit and just desperately try and escape. Because, yeah, sometimes it's a real, real struggle. Sometimes you'll be quite comfortable, and, yeah, in that in that first five-player game, I was, I'd stored up enough money to be able to just ride the whole thing out. I had at least one extra action token and had the money to be the last person escaping and to keep paying for my, you know, my $1 a turn. But it's, yeah, it, it can really, really hold you back that, yeah, none of those bonuses were available. So I wasn't as enticed to go to the businesses. In a five-player game as well, there's so many people around that the businesses closed really quickly. And so, yeah, that was another thing that made me think, oh, I need to go and do something different here because... People, I was low in turn order, I think, and people were just closing the businesses already. So, you know, why chase that and go and get keys and things when you can go and do different things? There's a lot of different uh, avenues to go down. And yeah, you're not necessarily tied to the order that things come out, but it can make a really big difference. Like these exit tiles, if they come out really, really early, as they did in that first game, that's a way for you to go and get some money right now and not have to spend your income cubes and have to make your income lower and lower and lower as you do when you go and visit the safe houses and the businesses. But those coming out later means that they're probably going to come out with these exit tiles on them, which gives you more options and you know, gives you more bags of money towards the end of the game. But yeah, money can get tight if you haven't got these ways of earning it really early on. You can go to the businesses that have come out if you've managed to dictate which comes out that has a you know an income now mark on your escape plan card 
But yeah, it's uh, every all three of those games and this game as well have played out very, very differently. And not just in the sense that things are just in a different place. The order that these things came out really, really made a massive difference. And also the way that you place the map, you can be restricted in, in where you can place things towards the end because you need to match the terrain. As I've forgotten one of the games, but you need to match the terrain and it has to be next to two tiles. But yeah, I think that the the second game that we played, we had built the map in such a way that everything was all squashed in one corner and all the space was just on one edge of the board. And it just so happened that the exit, yeah, we got unlucky and the exit that hadn't come out yet happened to be the real one. And so great, two of the exits are over here where we're doing all of our stuff. Now we've got to work out how we're going to get all the way across the city because that happened to be the exit that got revealed at the very end and that tile hadn't come out until the very, very last round. Yeah, the combination of those patrol tile, those patrol cards dictating which the exits, which the exit tile is the real one and the order of the map tiles that come out and where you've built them because over the course of the game you're just thinking of, okay, where do I need to go now and what will make it easier for me? Or I don't... Uh, this one's got fewer policemen so I want to put that one out or this one matches the terrain type and it's one great big space for me so I can get there easily but then by the end you're thinking oh well I've, you can you can be thinking I've really really messed this up to be able to escape smoothly so I think that's a really really strong point of it and it plays differently as well based on yeah there's a lot of these uh, contact cards that are going to make a big difference and the way that you unlock your asset tiles. And like I've never played, in, in those three normal games, I'd never played like this where I was really unlocking the top and just trying to get loads of these bags of money and not worrying as much about getting things from the contact cards. You know, the, the asset tiles are arguably more useful. I suppose it depends on the position that you're in, but you know, healing wounds, getting a wild key, things like that are often more useful than just being able to move one police officer from one place to another. But yeah, having that freedom to have all of those tiles up there and not necessarily have to take notoriety could be a really strong thing as well. Yeah, there's just so many ways to go down, so many different things that, yeah, I've got a good feeling that it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep feeling very, very different every time that we play. The two-player game has got Sandra in it. I, I really like that addition. It can be, yes, yeah, so sometimes she, maybe just through the look of the draw, she might just keep going on things you're ready to go to or that... Yeah, you, know, you just have to change your plans, or maybe she'll just keep going on your tile, and then you, when you have to move away, she's a police officer that you that's basically costing you more things. She's making you take more wounds and things. I think though it's been in the two games and this uh, playthrough game, it's been very balanced. Like in the in the first game, she would kind of hit us both just as much, and it was as frustrating for both of us. And then I think she cost me 20 points at the very end by making me take a wound, but I lost by more than 20 points, so it didn't matter. And then in the second game that I played, she didn't really make that much of an impact. She was closing businesses and things and getting in the way and getting rid of cards and things, but she wasn't really going on spaces that we were on. And yeah, you could say that that, would, that could happen in a three-player game, that maybe you aren't necessarily going to the same places. We kind of went for very different things in this game. Marty businesses, me safe houses. So yeah, I think it's a, a nice a nice little way of tightening the board up and not really much upkeep at all. You know, you're measuring her notoriety because you might be able to send some police her way that can help you out a little bit. Uh, you know, she's not worrying about unlocking uh, asset tiles and things and it'll change her turn order that you might want to go for, you might want to go after her because yeah, you know that she's going to move. That's a good thing as well. You know that she's not going to go to the same business twice in a row because the cards are only in there once and players aren't really going to go to the same place. They might rest and stay where they are, I suppose, but most of the time you're going to go somewhere else. Uh, the, the actual businesses and storehouses, you can only go to them once, safe houses. You can only go to those once in the game, so you can kind of get an idea that, you know, okay, people are going to be moving on. One thing I didn't mention in the playthrough, actually, because it didn't happen, if you have three wounds and you need to take another, you heal one of your wounds and then you have to take one of these handcuff cards and place it in the leftmost slot on your briefcase and it can cover up contact cards, it could make you discard an asset tile and you know mean that you can't get the maximum contact card bonus at the end as well. So that's another little thing that we never quite got to. But yeah, absolutely loved the plays of it so far. The this yeah, the criticisms, I, I, it's, it's the only 
little thing to remember is this uh, the contact cards with the uh, with the lockers you know if you're getting a green one it's the contact cards plus one the black ones it's just the number of contact cards the brown ones contact cards minus one it's a little extra thing to remember but really as with everything it's all on the board that's a it's worth noting as well say it with every single one of the eagle griffin vital Asserta games they're all you know the graphic design and the art is done by eno tool and it's you know always just beautiful it it's always incredibly thematic and nice to look at but also incredibly functional and clear so much of your player board or the actual main board is dedicated to reminding you of all these things, you know, that you can buy two equipment tiles, how much everything is, the bonuses you get when you visit all of the different locations. The thing I mentioned with the contact cards, everything is kind of spelled out for you. And you have a little player aid as well that describes all of the locations in detail as well. It's really good for that because I, I would say that this is, for for me anyway, and def and definitely for Rach, this is this has been the easiest one to to grasp and to and for me to explain to other people as well. I've said with a lot of the other Vital Lucida games, I love them as I've said, but they are often everything is linked to the next action, and it's like this great big circle, and you kind of have to explain everything, and then when you get back to the beginning again it starts to click of how all of this interacts together. Uh, in this, I feel like it's easier to just kind of explain when there are a few locations out. That, that's an advantage that you don't really have to explain every single location at the start because it's not really out there. It might be worth mentioning that, oh, th there'll be a church out later that can lower your notoriety and things like that. But the advantage of the board growing and that it isn't necessarily this big... Yeah, this, this big circular puzzle, which, as I said, I really, really enjoy. But, yeah, the fact that this seems to be more straightforward to play anyway. The, the decision space is definitely still up there. It's still complex. It can still be agonizing, especially on that third day when you when you know it. In a, in a two-player game, it's been... Yeah, in a, a five-player game, there's, there's a lot of things going on. But in the two-player games that I've played, both times on the third day... We were both sitting there with, you know, we've, we've got money. We've got enough money to be the second person to leave, but we could do, we could do other things. If, if, if I stay out, then I could do more things as long as I'm sure that I'm going to be the first person out. But if I go and do that thing, then the other player could just escape. And now I've just spent my money that I had to be able to escape. And if you, if you don't escape, if you can't pay that money or you can't actually get out of the city, you lose, you lose with zero points. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a brilliant way of adding tension and even more weight to the decisions that, yes, yeah, it's, it's not just, oh, I'm gonna lose a penalty or the other player's gonna get more points for escaping first. No, it's, it's completely over if you don't do it. So yeah, everything's a really tough decision in that last day because sometimes it's difficult to even think of how you're gonna escape. But when you have that added thing of, oh, I could do so much, I could do this one thing and score so many points. But if I do that and the other player escapes first, I get nothing. It's a really, really nice system. The the player counts as well. As I said, I've only played it at five and two. But at five players, it really changed things up because it may have been the way the tiles came out, but everyone was racing for the businesses because they were closing so quickly or... You know, there, there weren't that many things out in day one, so we were all going to the only shop that was out, for example. There were a lot of people clustered in the same place. And I had just decided, you know, this this seems like a good way to get notoriety really quickly. And if you race up this thing, no one got really, really high this uh, on the notoriety track this game. But the, the next step of notoriety is unlock two of your asset tiles. And then above that, it's uh, get an extra action disc and another asset tile. Now, staying up here is really bad. You're going to lose 100 points if you stay up there, and people are going to keep being able to move police onto your space. But it, it's, it's harder to do in a game with fewer players, but going to those spaces where everyone was grouped up and just shooting up this track, it, there's more spaces on a track with more players. But getting straight to the top, having all of that space for the you know the asset tiles all unlocking and having all of that space for contact cards and the tiles whether it's money or equipment and things was a massive advantage at the start and if you can then work out lowering that notoriety back down to so that you don't get punished as much at the end of the game it's it's 
it's just a really nice advantage that you've had. You're going to have to be avoiding police anyway, so it's not too bad that you're going to have to avoid more. And people can, you know, put more in your way. But I really like that system as well. That really, really changed based on the number of players and the way that the board had been built. Yeah, it's it's been really, really nice exploring the the really different ways that it's played so far. I say that ah, criticisms I was trying to think of. One thing is that there is a bit of it's not really take that, but when when you go up these conf these um, notoriety tracks and people who have lower notoriety than you get to move police closer to you. I don't really mind that. Even in the two player game, when you are only doing it to the other person, I I feel like it, you know, it completely fits the theme that, you know, I've done these things, I knew they were going to increase my notoriety, and yeah, the police are after me more. Completely makes sense, completely fits, I'm fine with that. The the situation it happens sometimes in a two player game, definitely was more prevalent in the five player game in that people can use that opportunity that someone else has made by increasing their notoriety to send the police to your tile because it's technically closer. You know, as long as the policeman moves closer to the person who caused the notoriety increase, they're allowed to do that. By sending them all to a person tile that you think can do well, I suppose that's, you know, that's a catch-up mechanism in games or it's just a standard thing, but definitely for us who are you know, quite, uh, quite, quite far gone Care, Care Bear players, yeah, we'd never do that to each other anyway, but yeah, in a, in a game with more players, that's definitely an element that I don't really like, and it's it's not really a thing that needs uh, it needs fixing. I just, I, I prefer that the police are sent to the person that caused the notoriety, but that's just a tiny, tiny thing, because overall, yeah, it's it's another fantastic game from Vita Lacerda. Definitely, I'd say there, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of big decisions and a lot of things to weigh up throughout the game, but especially on that third day, it can be completely agonizing. It could be, yeah, it was mentioned in the five player game that we had, that it could be a case where I think everybody, um, everybody escaped quite early in the round and I stuck around to try and, you know, try and work out how I was going to escape. And after all of my thinking and all of my extra turns and everything that I'd had, I you know, I've, I stayed the whole day and had at least one extra action tile. I messed up and I was one money short from escaping. Luckily, it was a learning game. We were allowed to take back something silly I'd spent money on the previous turn. But yeah, it could be a case where everyone escapes really, really early and then someone spends ages and ages and ages and then doesn't even escape and gets nothing. But, you know, it's it's a it's an edge case and I suppose that's, that's more exacerbated in a five-player game. But just a little thing to worth mentioning so that I'm not just saying that I think that it's fantastic. So, there's so much to like about this. There's so much depth. There is so many agonizing decisions, especially towards that very end when you are desperately thinking whether you can escape or whether you can risk taking one more action. But it doesn't really, really matter what I think because the playthrough was a whole two-player game of it. And hopefully it's there's not too many huge mistakes in there, but the subtitles are there to correct you anyway. Campaign page is in the description to see the Kickstarter stuff for yourself. Paul Grogan's Gaming Rules official rules video is linked as well all over the place, I would imagine. It's definitely in the description. But thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.